The PSP Master Comp package consists of two plugins, the Master Comp and the Micro Comp. They are both high fidelity stereo dynamic processors designed for compression and expansion. As the name suggests, the Master Comp is more suited to mastering situations as it has more parameters for greater control, which also results in higher latency times. The Micro Comp is a more lightweight version designed for use while tracking, but in the modern door world where most doors have plug in delay compensation, it may well be possible to use either on tracks when playing back projects. The amount of latency is displayed at the bottom of each interface as both a time in milliseconds and number of samples. As there are some controls common to both, let's take a look at their interfaces side by side. Both have combined VU and PPM meters to show audio level as well as peaks. One for each channel left and right. The VU meters use a long black needle, while peaks are indicated by a shorter red needle. Also included are numeric peak indicators for both PPM and VU levels which hold for 2 seconds, plus overload LED indicators that remain lit until reset. The VU reference level as well as meter ballistic settings can be changed on the back panel. That's accessed by clicking on the logo towards the bottom. Also here is the overs parameter which adjusts how many successive sample peaks are needed to trigger the overload indicators. Return to the front again by clicking on the About panel. Both have a ratio control that allows for setting the compression or expansion ratios. Compression ranges from 1.2 to 12 to 1 and expansion ratios from 0.92 to 0.5 to 1. Attack on both ranges from 0.1 milliseconds to 1 second. The Master Comp also has an automatic mode. When this is engaged, the attack control sets a nominal attack time and the automatic mode adjusts it according to current transients in the signal. As well as hearing the effect, we can see the effect the attack control has on the audio by watching the peak meters while adjusting attack times. As you'd expect, short attack time causes the gain reduction to trigger more often as more peaks trigger the compressor. Switching the auto switch on at any given setting tends to reduce the number of peaks that trigger the compressor as the attack time is dynamically adjusted. The smooth button helps to reduce compression distortion in the low and mid frequencies. On the micro comp, it is a switch towards the bottom of the display. The effect of the smooth switch is probably more noticeable on the kick drum and bass which have a little more edge to them with it turned off. Sometimes this may be the desired effect, so just experiment to see what works best in any particular situation. Threshold sets the level that the audio signal needs to be above before compression or expansion can take place. The range is from plus 6 to minus 30 dB. The threshold control in the micro comp is calibrated to be more sensitive and therefore more suited for tracking use. Makeup gain adjusts any gain lost during the compression or expansion phases. This happens before the mix, output and limiter controls. The auto switch uses threshold and ratio settings to automatically adjust makeup gain. Some manual calibration using a makeup control may still be needed, however, and be aware that sudden large volume changes may result when first turning this on. Release times are adjustable from 0.1 seconds to 10 seconds on the master comp, and from 0.03 to 3 seconds on the micro comp. There is also an auto release mode that uses the release setting as a nominal time and then adjusts the release time dynamically based on the current material. Now let's take a look at the sidechain capabilities. As there is significant difference in the controls available, I'll concentrate on one plugin at a time. The master comp first. For purposes of this demonstration, I have a simple kick drum routed to the sidechain input to provide some rhythmic control over the compression. This other signal is sometimes referred to as a key. I also have some fairly extreme compression settings to emphasize the effect. 
The button marked SCEXT turns the external sidechain control on or off. When it is off, the compressor is being keyed by the material directly from the track or bus. That includes any processing by the sidechain filters that we'll look at shortly. When it's on or lit, the compressor is being keyed by any signal that may be present at the external sidechain input. See your door documentation for how to send a signal to an external sidechain. The button between the two filter controls marked MON allows us to monitor the key signal that is currently controlling the compressor. If the external sidechain button is active, that will be the signal at the external sidechain input, which may mean silence if there's no signal present there. If the external sidechain button's off, the key is a signal from the track at the internal sidechain monitored before any compression takes place. I'll demonstrate that so you can hear what I mean. You'll clearly hear the differences as I start playback and adjust the sidechain source controls. Initially, with all buttons off, there's some extreme gain reduction taking place as the compressor is keyed by the incoming stereo audio on the main track. You can hear that as well as see it in the meters. Now I'll click on the monitor button with the sidechain control still off. We can now hear the key, which is a stereo audio track on the internal sidechain. Notice this isn't being compressed in any way. I'm now going to turn on the external sidechain and we'll hear the audio at that input as the monitor button is still on. It's just a steady kick drum. When I turn off the monitor button, you'll see that the stereo audio is now being compressed by the compressor using the kick drum at the sidechain input as a trigger. The rhythmic kick is clearly visible in the meters. Note that this kick is not an audible part of the signal, it's just being used as a key for the compressor. The low and high filters for the side chain are both switchable from high pass and low pass types to shelf filters. The high and low pass filters cut by 15 decibels, while the shelf filters add 12 decibels of gain. Click on the graphic beside the relevant control to change it. The corner frequency for each filter is adjustable via the relevant rotary. Remember these affect the key signal at the side chain, be that internal or external. They do not directly affect the processed audio, only the control of the compressor, so it's possible to restrict which frequencies trigger compression. We can hear the effect of these filters on the external sidechain signal using the monitor button. And as I increase the cutoff on the low filter, you can hear the kick losing much of its energy. This in turn reduces the amount of compression being applied to the audio, which is visible in the meters when I switch monitoring off. Compression doesn't start to happen again until I reduce the low filter's cutoff frequency and the energy of the kick is restored, allowing it to trigger the compressor as its level rises above the threshold again. If the external side chain is off, the filters affect the internal side chain signal, which in turn affects when compression takes place. Increasing the low cutoff frequency reduces the amount of compression triggered by the lower frequencies, whereas increasing high frequencies increases compression triggered by high frequencies. For example, this might help when treating sibilance on vocals. Remember, we can always monitor the signal that these are affecting if we wish by clicking on the monitor button. Now let's look at sidechain control on the microcomp. Monitoring the sidechain here is achieved in a similar manner to the master comp. The EXT button turns on the external sidechain and the MON button allows us to monitor the sidechain signal, be that internal or external. The, island in the, sun. the control beneath the sidechain label gives us some filter control over the sidechain signal albeit not as extensive as on the master comp. 
Both the low filter to the left and high filter to the right of three states change by clicking on the graphic. Flat is a default, indicating that the signal has a flat response filter on it. A boost indicates that the relevant filter is boosting the signal. Or a cut indicates that the filter is attenuating the signal. The difference between the microcomp and mastercomp is that the corner frequencies are fixed on the microcomp while they're adjustable on the mastercomp. You can hear the compression levels change as I adjust the filters, effectively changing the amount of compression taking place as the side chain signal keying the compressor changes. If I click on the monitor button, you can hear the actual effect on the signal at the side chain. Now let's concentrate once more on the master comp before looking at further controls shared by both editions. The link control on the master comp allows us to set the amount of linking between channels. At 100%, channels are fully linked and compression will be even on both the left and right channels. Reduce to zero and linking is effectively off so that each channel is only processed by its own signal. They're completely independent of the other. The easiest way to demonstrate this is to pan the track hard left. If I increase the setting to 100%, you'll see that both channels are being compressed by the same amount. The left channel is linked to the right and causing compression there. As I reduce the link setting, the compression on the right hand channel will reduce until at about 50% all right hand channel compression has stopped. Centralising the pan again increases compression on the right hand channel, as that compressor is now being triggered by its own material. Use this control to fine-tune the amount of compression required. There are high and low pass filters for this control, and they're turned on and off for the relevant graphic. The tilt parameter provides control of how each side of the side chain signal controls the compressor and allows for precise control of each channel's processing depth when unbalanced material is keying the compressor. The mix control allows a blend of process and unprocessed signal, 100% being fully processed and 0% the dry, unprocessed signal. This makes blending compressed signal with transient transparent sounds relatively easy. The output parameter controls the output signal to the limiter on the master comp and on the micro comp controls final output levels. In the bottom left hand corner of both are the on off switches for turning the processors off and bypassing the signal. Further along the master comp is a switch to turn FAT processing on or off. FAT stands for Frequency Authentication Technique, which uses double sampling technology for high quality smooth sound. Note that this uses considerably more processing power and may cause glitching or pops if turned on or off during playback. This switch is not present on the micro comp. The hard and soft switch on the master comp is shown as a button on the micro comp and switches between hard and soft knee. Hard knee results in sudden compression at or very close to the threshold, whereas soft knee spreads the compression out over the level of the material starting below the threshold. This results in a much smoother, more gradual compression application. The peak RMS switch is shown as a button on the micro comp and switches the level detectors between those two settings. The final switch on the master comp is the limit switch, which engages a limiter that will stop output from exceeding 0 dB. There's a couple more switches to mention on the micro comp. The mono stereo switch, which will save a little CPU power when being used on a mono track. And the link switch, which turns channel linking on or off for equal processing of stereo material.
That's the Master Comp and Micro Comp. Comprehensive, high quality compressors for tracking and mastering.